Okay, this video is going to deal with the inverted barometer effect, and that's basically uh, one of the effects that occur inside of a storm that cause a storm surge. Uh, storm surges occur uh, when you have a lot of water that's pushed upon the shore from winds, but it's also increased by the drop in the pressure. So we talked before about high pressure systems and low pressure systems in terms of uh, how they uh, affect clouds, the ability to rise into the air, right? So the same thing can happen on the water, but to a much lev lesser extent. So high pressure, what it'll do is it'll actually push down upon the water, and the low pressure um, won't pu will, will push down, but just with less force. So if you have like an ocean, what will happen is the ocean will actually become a little bit depressed around the high pressure, and around the low pressure will actually rise a little bit. Uh, and when you have a very strong storm, okay, let's say you had a hurricane, uh, you could have a big difference between uh, the, the low pressure of the storm and the high pressure on a land around it or, or a normal situation. So, for example, in a, a very strong hurricane, you could have pressure of about uh, 900 millibars. Okay, that would be really, really strong. I mean, when you're getting under 900, you're getting into like record hurricanes. Uh, and if you had like high pressure, like in a typical uh, Midwest winter, you know, phenomenon, you could have something, you know, over a thousand millibars. It could have up to probably a thousand thirty millibars. But the difference here is that if we took a thousand millibars as a really nice day at the beach, and we took 900 millibars as a storm, we could get an idea for how high the water could rise just by the pressure, nothing to do with the wind, just by the fact that there's less pushing down. So how much actually is that difference? Well, the inverted barometer effect basically says for every one millibar, you get about 0.01 meters of a rise for every uh, one millibar difference. So what does that mean? Well, that basically means that if I had a difference here of, in this case, my difference between these is about 100 millibars, right? That I could figure out uh, how high that ocean would rise if I multiplied by the difference on a normal day and then a very strong storm. I'm going to get uh, about one meter. So it's going to give me one meter. Now that's that's about three feet. That may not sound like very much, but it's a lot. Uh, if you're talking about, you know, like storm surge on top of the wind surge, just the fact that the pressure is lower means that uh, that water can rise up much higher. Now, you may not think three feet sounds like a lot, but if you're at the beach, let's say this is the beach like this, and the ocean's here, right? Okay, that, you know, further on the out on the beach, like when you're far out, you may not even rise that much. It may only rise about maybe two feet if you're like really far out on the beach here. So that might only be like a two foot rise, right? You may say, well, okay, that's not that much. But if you get three feet of water rise, all of a sudden all this water's going inland and it's covering streets and buildings just by the fact that the pressure has changed. That's not even dealing with the wind. I mean, the wind is going to push more water up, and I'll talk about that later. And also the shape of the, sh the shoreline affects that. But just the fact that you have less pressure pushing down, get about three feet of rise. You could get a little bit more on a really, really strong storm, but still that's pretty, pretty amazing that just the pressure from the atmosphere can cause that change in the height of the ocean.